Today's video is going to be a quick, simple, and basic one light outdoor photography tutorial that's perfect for beginner photographers. And I shot this during an actual engagement shoot and I will show you how I created these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Now, as I said in my intro, this particular video is about a very simple and basic one light outdoor flash photography setup. This is something that I use very often and it's really very simple that even beginner photographers can actually do it. Now, I shot this during one of my actual engagement shoots. Fortunately, the couple, shout out to Melvin and Ruby, allowed me to shoot while I was shooting them. And here is the video. What's the concept for today's video? Well, I'm gonna be shooting them here and trying to bring out more colors in the sky and in the pool. And the camera that I will be using will be my Sony A7R Mark IV with a 24 millimeter one, uh, 2.8 GM. Now, I also have here the HNY ND filter, the very ND filter, so that I can control my shutter speed and stay within my flash scene speed. So the purpose of the very ND filter is very simple. It's basically to cut the light that's going through your lens. In other words, it's like putting shades in your eye. So what that does, it, it allows you now to bring your shutter speed within the flash sync speed, therefore maximizing the power of your flash. Because if you're shooting in high speed sync, you are basically cutting the power of your flash by about maybe to about one fourth power. Now the beautiful thing about a very ND filter is that there are different f-stops, meaning the density can change depending on how you twist that particular filter. Now it's always also good to have very good, very ND filters so that you don't get color cast or you don't get really degradation of, of image quality. And H&Y for me, perfect. Honestly, it's a very good, very ND filter. So again, the very ND filter, you just shift it and it actually changes how much light it cuts through your lens. So it's another way to control your exposure too. It's important that I stay within my flash sync speed so that I can maximize the power of my flash, which in this case, I will be using the Photix Indra 500 with a Raja Deep 60, which I will show you now. Koi, can you bring the light here? So while my assistant is bringing the light here, you can see that the pose that they're doing now, that's basically what we're gonna make them do, but sitting down. So my assistant photographer is getting them ready so that they're more comfortable. And then afterwards, we transfer them somewhere here. Now the essential part here is that the light is coming from here, right? The sun is coming from here. And since we are gonna be basically overpowering the sun, we would want our existing, our flash, this one, this is the Raja Deep 60 with a Potix Indra 500 to come from the same general direction of the sun. So let's compose now. Why can you put it here, facing here? The most important thing here now is that the shadows won't be seen in the shot. By shadow, I mean the shadow that's coming from the physical light. In other words, since I am putting it in the same general direction of the sun, the light being there will cast the shadow, so you always have to make sure that the shadow of that particular light is not gonna be seen in your shot. Right there, so we'll have them here so that the shadows are right here, if we're okay with that. Then now it's time for me to compose. So I will now be on shutter speed priority so that I can keep it at one over 250. At one over 250, I am getting about an f-stop of f8 at one stop underexposed and by doing that i am actually making the blue a bit bluer okay so we'll i'll take some test shots later without the flash and with the flash so you guys can see the difference so now it's time for me to call in the couple okay so let's say hello to our couple this is Ruby and this is Melvin. They're getting married in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we can do a video with that also. <laughs> Which we actually did, so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to catch some of my behind the scenes videos of how I shot their wedding. All right, so the most important thing is when we're posing them, again, Ruby, what side do you prefer? Right side. Right side, so that's the most important thing. The light should always favor the side of the bride because she's the one that needs to look good. 
sorry, it doesn't really that's matter, fine. right? <laughs> All right. So Ruby, let's have you here because your light is gonna be here. So let's sit down here. Melts, can you sit down beside Ruby also? And the same pose you are doing there inside, we do here. Except that, there we go. So Ruby, can you have your arm underneath? That's perfect. And then now you can lean towards Melvin there and looking towards here. Melts, is there something that you can do with your legs so that um, there? Actually, you could put down that one. There we go. That's perfect. That's it. Light like going here, Koi. So this is how it looks like without flash. I had to underexpose it a bit to bring in the colors of the, well you can't see the sky yet now, but to co bring in the colors of the pool, in other words, control my highlights. Because one thing I love doing whenever I am shooting, especially with off camera flash, is always to control my highlights. I just find it easier to recover my shadows rather than recover my highlights. So we have everything that we like already. The exposure spot one, we're one over 250. F3.5, one stop underexposed at one point stop. 1.5 stops on our ND filter, on our very ND filter. So our flash is gonna be at one fourth power. Point right here, there we go. So with this one, I had my light set already on the right side as you saw earlier. And of course, this is a test shot with the light. Composition still doesn't really matter to me. The most important thing is I get my light correct. And the moment that I got my light correct here, I decided now to fix my composition. With your ear, then smile. There we go. Okay. Beautiful. Funny. 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 And that. Uh, and this is the final straight out of camera image, and this is the processed image. You see how we were able to bring in a little bit of detail here in the blue sky, but Technically, this is normally just my practice session. What do I mean by that? Normally, the first layout is the one that I feel I can get rid of afterwards. We are fortunate enough in this particular case that we were able to get some good images from it, but it is more about getting their feet wet, especially with the fact that Melvin is a photographer, so they're really not, well, you guys know that, that the worst subject is always gonna be a photographer because they're so used to being behind the camera that it's very difficult for them to be in front of the camera. So that's what I did here. And it's also a very basic one light setup. So from here, when they got comfortable, we decided to do another layout with the same light setup, which is what I'm gonna be showing you now. You can see from the behind the scenes video that we had beautiful light, very flat but beautiful light. In other words, it was very soft light. However, I wanted to add a little bit of contrast. That's why I decided to put my light again in the same general direction of the sun. So this is it. This is really basically how you shoot with off camera flash, especially for those of you guys who are beginners. Now, the first thing that you do is that you put your light towards the same general direction of the sun first. Number two, you expose for your existing ambient light. You expose for your existing ambient light to control your highlights, maybe about a stop, a stop and a half underexposed. Then since you have your light from, your, uh, from the same general direction as the existing ambient light, that will then replace the sun. However, since you're only about one stop underexposed, you're still gonna get that beautiful soft light that's really gonna go around her face, beautiful, beautiful light. So again, if you've set your exposure already to how you want it to be, you don't touch that anymore. Afterwards, you add your flash. The moment you add your flash, if it's too strong, then you make it weaker. If it's too weak, you make it stronger using the flash power, which is what I did here. You could see that this is the shot without any flash, okay? This is straight out of the camera, no flash yet. Then I put in a flash, though it was a bit too strong, since it was too strong, I decided to dial it in. And after I dialed it in, this is what I did. You could see the general position of the light actually changed from, from here. Here, it was more towards the front of her face. So if this is her face, the light was somewhere here. And in this particular shot, let me show you, I moved it somewhere here. And why did I do that? Because you could see here from the shot that was coming from this particular area, 
that we lost a lot of shadows, we lost a lot of contrast, which is something that I always want to put, or that's a whole reason on why we lit it in the first place. So by shifting it here, I am lighting basically the short side of the face. So by lighting the short side of the face, I was able to get this particular image. So this one very simple outdoor lighting setup really has a lot of applications. The most important thing to remember again is that number one, you expose for your existing ambient light. The moment you expose for your ex existing ambient light, you don't touch it anymore. Unless of course the light changes drastically, but you don't touch that. Afterwards, you position your flash. It's really dependent on where you want to position your flash. This is where trial and error comes in. And number three is after you've positioned your flash, you now tweak the power of your flash. In other words, if it's overexposed, you make it, you make it weaker, your flash. And if it's underexposed, you make it stronger by using the flash power again. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.